Right. So uh, mitochondria, which are the uh, energy providers, the cell, uh, uh, have been implicated in a lot of disease most recently. And uh, diabetes, glaucoma, a lot of specific diseases just to mitochondria themselves. They change with age. We lose mitochondria as we get older. The mitochondria become less effective. You know, as people get older, they have less energy overall. And so the, the, the mitochondria are, we're seeing that as a critical element in a lot of diseases. But in order to measure their function independently, we've never had a good way to do that uh, in a living organism. So we can do it in a laboratory. Um, flavoprotein fluorescence is a phenomenon that occurs due to oxidative stress in mitochondria. So flavoproteins are components of a lot of the proteins, like 18 of the proteins within the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain provides ATP, which is the energy currency for the cell. So when the cell is under oxidative stress, you will see increased amounts of fluorescence and that corresponds to decrease function of the mitochondria and ultimately the mitochondria may die and when enough of that happens within a cell, the cell dies. So being able to look at that amount of stress in a chronic disease or even an acute disease may give an indication of what's happening to metabolically way before structural changes occur. So it's early substructural change is what we're interested in before the damage is done. And so basically it's a very simple device. It uses a spe very specific wavelength of blue light to stimulate this flavoprotein fluorescence. And by measuring that, you can look at the indication of oxidative stress. So the, they've looked at diabetics, they've looked, we've looked at uh, glaucoma, we've looked at central serous retinopathy, um, we have looked at uh, elevated intracranial pressure that causes uh, pseudotumor cerebri, um, we looked at macular degeneration. All these things increase flavoprotein fluorescence. We've also most recently and most excitingly has looked at the ability of this device to show uh, benefit from a treatment. So if you give an injection uh, for an anti-VEGF agent of a patient who has like diabetic retinopathy, you'll see a response in reduction in the flavoprotein fluorescence earlier than you will the structural change from OCT. And it corresponds to what the patient actually experiences in terms of their visual acuity. So now you have an objective measure which substantiates the subjective reality that the patient is experiencing that the doctor has difficulty actually recording. It, it may, may fluctuate a little bit. So in a lot of conditions where the pressure was elevated and the pressure was reduced in the eye, you can see that there's a reduction in the flavoprotein fluorescence. So it's a, it's a very interesting biomarker that has this ability to respond to therapy and to show response. So a, one, a couple of other studies that have been going on, one that was done in glaucoma was looking at um, a mixture of nutraceutical agents that are neuroprotective and seeing that after a very short period of time you could actually see reduction in the oxidative stress in these patients. And it was done in a placebo controlled trial. Uh, that was presented at the AGS last year. But so um, most recently they've been looking at uh, early changes in patients taking the ARIDS-2 formulation for AMD and showing that it's actually changed their oxidative stress levels. So we, when we look in with high resolution imaging, uh, we may not see anything for a period of time until there's damage or there may see maybe some reduction if we see an area of swelling. But even in, in cases where there's no swelling and dry macular degeneration for a long time, this shows potential to be a marker that we're on the right track in terms of treating patients.